Hello, it's John Heaton. Um, before I start this evening, I've had a few requests, and I'm going to get round to all of them. I've had a request to review Lindsay Buckingham, so I'm going to be doing his Law and Order first solo album soon. I've had a request to do Revolver, um, which I will do, but I can't at this moment find my vinyl copy, so I might have to wait. And I've also had a request to do this album, which is Super Tramp's debut from 1970. So this will actually complete my review of Super Tramp albums with the uh, with the Hodgson Davis lineup or with those two in the band. Even though this first album didn't have uh, Helliwell or C. Benberg or um, Dougie Thompson, it had Robert Miller on drums and Richard Palmer on guitar and vocals, and um, as well as Roger and Rick. Um, and the interesting thing, interesting thing about this album, well, there's several interesting things actually. First to say, first thing to say is. Rick Davis and Roger Hodgson are already on board this very first album from 1970 July, which didn't do particularly well commercially at all. Had a, a few positive reviews, I believe. But they wrote the music to these songs, but they didn't write any of the lyrics, because at this stage, Roger and Rick didn't want to write lyrics. So Richard Palmer contributes all of the lyrics to this album. So you're not going to get any of Roger's um, what he became famous for later with his confessional, um, you know, personal songs at all. Because uh, although you do get glimpses of uh, Roger's melodic skills on this album, which obviously he was to develop later. Uh, a strange thing, I think I mentioned in my Indelibly Stamped review how that album featured Rick Davis on lead vocals more often than not. Um, but on this debut album, Roger is taking the lead more often than not. So and neither album did particularly well. So I don't know whether they said to each other, well, you had a go last time, let me have a go on the second album, or what happened. It's a little bit strange that. And in fact, Rick, there's only really one song where I can even detect his vocal on this album, and that's Shadow Song on side two. But it's a very different vocal style from his later, um, you know, there's none of the cynical or observational stuff of later on. This Shadow Song is uh, just about distinguishable as Rick's vocal, but you have to know his voice pretty well to even get that far. and. Uh, I did recognise, and I've since read up, that uh, Palmer sings some vocals on this album as well, particularly on Maybe I'm a Beggar. Um, but anyway, so this album came out on A&M, July 1970, recorded at Morgan Studios in Wilston, North London, which is actually, as Beatles fans know, where Paul McCartney recorded his first solo album, which came out three months before this album. So they probably didn't bump into each other in the studio, but it was more or less the same time period, uh, which is interesting. So the song, the album opens with well, the cover. I don't know what you guys think. Not bad, but Supertramp were later to become known for their classic covers, and this one is not in the top drawer, but it's amusing enough, I suppose. Pictures of the band on the back. The first track, surely, uh, gorgeous vocal from Roger, nice melody. And this one sounds as if it might, could have been written by Roger because it's kind of in his style. But apparently Richard Palmer wrote all the lyrics for this album. But surely is a nice melody. And it crops up again at the end of the album as a, as a longer reprise. Um, which, which doesn't actually add much. There's a sort of instrumental bit at the end. I think it works perfectly well on side one as a short intro, a bit like um, Easy Does It did on Crisis, for example. Uh, it's even shorter than that, actually. Uh, it's a long road, the next track. Uh, nice kind of funky, uh, I wouldn't say rocker, but um, 
This reminded me of traffic, actually. I think they were. I think they did say that they were influenced by traffic, not only recording the album at night, but uh, uh, in the instrumentation on this track, I kind of was reminded of tracks like uh, Pearly Queen and uh, Shanghai Noodle Factory and stuff. Um, and also, traffic going away into the countryside to get away from it all, I'm sure, must have appealed to Roger. So, there's a kind of trafficy influence on this album. Uh, these first two albums, Supertramp hadn't really decided what kind of band they wanted to be or what style they wanted to champion. And, uh, well, on this one, they hadn't even started to write lyrics yet, Roger and Rick. So, um, kind of dipping their toe in the water. I think Roger's quite fond of this album, says it's naive, but uh, quite, um, I forget which, which word he uses, but I think he's quite complimentary about it. Uh, the third track, so that, that's not a bad track, it's, it's a long road. Uh, Albad, Albade, uh, and I'm not like other birds of prey. Kind of moody song with Roger taking the lead. Nice tune, not spectacular. But the fourth track, Words Unspoken, for me, easily the best track on the album. And the kind of melody that Roger would write in his sleep later on uh, gorgeous tune, gorgeous vocal, nice instrumentation. Uh, I, I love this track. I think it's um, it's the only track from this album which stands up with the with their best work. If I'm honest, maybe I'm a beggar is next. Um, strange lyrics, as you can tell from the title. Not really sure what they're about. Roger and uh, Richard Palmer share the uh, the vocals. Goes on six and a half minutes, a bit long to be honest. But quite moody, quite atmospheric, not bad. Home Again, the last track, only lasts a minute, 10 seconds. Uh, Roger did, used to do this in concert, uh, even after they were became big occasionally. Um, it's a nice little track, nothing, nothing too uh, amazing. And then side two, uh, considerably weaker than side one, I have to say. Uh, nothing to show is a kind of upbeat number. It's okay. Uh, nothing too memorable. Shadow song is a, as I said earlier, Rick is singing on, and uh, this is the, probably the best song on side two. Um, I like it. Try again, <laughs> the third track. I mean, the the chorus refrain is okay. Uh, sung by Roger, but why, oh why, it has to last 13 minutes, I don't know, because it, it way outstays its, uh, its welcome, if we're honest. Surely ends the album, the longer version of that one. So, it has its moments, Words Unspoken is a classic, uh, Surely is a nice melody, and there's some nice bits and pieces elsewhere. I'm going to give this album an 8 out of 10. And I play it reasonably often, not that often. But it wasn't till 1974 when they would start recording uh, the four classic albums, Crime of the Century, Crisis, Quietest Moments and Breakfast. But these first two albums, if you're a Supertramp fan, worth checking out. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>